Hello, everybody. This is Jennifer Schaus coming to you live from Washington, D.C. today. We are covering GSA schedules for product companies, and this is one of many webinars in our Webinar Wednesday series. Webinars are, are occurring every Wednesday throughout the entire year. We cover various topics in government contracting, and our speakers uh, include myself as well as other industry experts, uh, sometimes attorneys, accountants, and other business professionals. Uh, all of our webinars are recorded, and so today's recording will be available by close of business tomorrow. You can find those on our website under the Archived Webinars tab, or you can follow us on YouTube uh, where all of our webinars are posted, uh, and you'll receive updates on, um, on upcoming webinars as well there. Uh, in the interest of time, we do not take questions at the end, so if you do have questions about GSA schedules or any other government contracting topics, you can send those to us directly. Just a quick uh, blurb on us. We are based in downtown Washington, D.C. and provide various professional services for both product and service companies that are selling to the federal government. Our services cover anything from market analysis reports, contract administration, 8A certification, and more. Uh, we do host networking events throughout the year as well as uh, various seminars. You can find those on our website under the events section. A list of the upcoming webinars, uh, as mentioned earlier, is on our website under the webinars tab, and we are, I believe, fully scheduled for the entire year. Uh, a little bit about me is on this slide here, uh, as far as my background in government contracting and education. So let's dig into GSA schedules for product companies. Uh, our agenda for today is covering four main uh, components. First, what is a GSA schedule? Uh, how do companies qualify to actually, uh, we'll say, apply or submit a proposal to GSA to get onto the schedule? And then we'll dig in more specifically to some considerations that product companies should uh, take into mind. And these will be different from service uh, companies. And then I've got some concluding remarks. So first of all, what is a GSA schedule? Uh, it is a contract vehicle or a way for the government to purchase from you, and it is one of many, many contract vehicles that are out there. Uh, other vehicles include Navy Seaport E, NASA Soup, um, State Department's uh, contract vehicle, and OPM's uh, HCATs. Uh, if you need a full list of contract vehicles, you can find those on our website under the resources section and scroll down to contract vehicles. So a GSA schedule, it's not required. It's really just a marketing tool. Uh, and it does, because it is a contract, it will come with terms and conditions that you must abide by. So it's a five-year contract initially. And then at the end of each five years, there's a renewal period. Uh, and there are three of those renewal periods. So if you exercise all of your options, the GSA schedule from start to finish is a 20-year contract. Now, unlike the 8A certification, when you reach the end of the 20 years with your GSA schedule, you are then um, able and you have the option to then reapply or resubmit a proposal to GSA to get relisted. The 8A certification is different in that once you reach the end of the nine years with your SBA 8A certification, you cannot then reapply for 8A again. Some of the terms and conditions that I alluded to, GSA requires that you bring in at least $25,000 per year through your schedule. So you may have a $4 million contract with the Air Force, but if the Air Force decided not to use the GSA schedule and they procured your services or your product through another contract vehicle, that will not count against your GSA sales quota. Uh, another quick note on the sales quota is that GSA does um, kind of give you a pass for the first year, so that 25K uh, threshold kicks in at year two, and then every year thereafter. Most of what the GSA schedule is focused on is GSA securing your lowest prices. So if you were selling hammers at uh, $10 each in the commercial world, and you gave uh, Coca-Cola a rate of $8, your GSA rate then may be $7.80. Uh, so keep in mind that your margins will be lower with the GSA schedule, and most of it, again, is based on GSA securing your lowest prices. 
once you're on the schedule, it's uh, you're kind of on a vendor short list. There's no guarantee that anybody's going to purchase from you. But the government buyers can go to the website gsaadvantage.gov, which is similar to, say, an eBay or Amazon, uh, and type in keywords that they are looking for, bulletproof vests, uh, metal detectors, hammers, uh, telephones, whatever it, it may be, uh, and they will find various vendors who are selling those products and services uh, along with the associated price. Uh, because the GSA schedule is a solicitation, you are then uh, responding to an RFP or request for proposal. There are changes that are made throughout the time that that RFP is sitting out on FedBizOps. So you want to make sure that when you are responding to the schedule that uh, you have included any updates that GSA has made to that particular uh, schedule. Your proposal to GSA must be compliant. Again, part of that is making sure that you have included anything that they have um, added to the solicitation since you initially had downloaded it. Um, once you kind of make it past the uh, past GSA's muster, they will reach back for sometimes additional information, which they call clarifications. And then once you satisfy those questions, they'll move on to what's called the price negotiations. And that involves two pieces, two litmus tests. First is your internal price analysis. Uh, and that will look at in that similar example of you're selling hammers for $10 and you sold a hammer to Coca-Cola for $9. Um, GSA will want something that's lower than your most favorite customer or your lowest price customer. They will then also do a second test, which is looking at all the other GSA scheduled vendors that are also selling hammers or whatever it is your product is. And if all the other hammers are at $7 or $6 uh, and all things being equal, uh, they would then want your hammer to be priced competitive with the other vendors. So you may want to do some market research before you decide to pursue the schedule to make sure that your products are in sync and in the same price zone as the other vendors. So some qualifications to get onto the schedule. Uh, you will need two years of financial statements. This includes both balance sheet and income statement for two full years, 24 months. You should be showing revenue and preferably no losses. For every line item that you are proposing to GSA, you need to indicate that you have sold this item in the past. You can do this by producing invoices, actual invoices uh, that have indicated that you sold this hammer or whatever your product is at whatever the commercial price um, that you have that listed for. You also need to prove that you have past performance and that sometimes is simply done by uh, indicating these invoices or quotation sheets for your products. And then lastly, and the, the most important piece there is offering GSA uh, lower rates than your most favored customer or your lowest price customer. And you'll disclose those most favored customer um, pricing discounts and policies on the document, which is called the Commercial Sales Practice Document, or the CSP. This, you will indicate who the customer is, whether it is a customer name, meaning uh, Coca-Cola, or a category of customers, meaning uh, associations and nonprofits, educational institutions, state and local government. Uh, so it could be a category of customers as well. And you will indicate when you have given these discounts, how much the discounts are, and why you gave them. Sometimes you can show GSA that you gave these discounts simply because there was volume or quantity involved. So some additional considerations for product companies that are separate from service companies. The three main important pieces are the Trade Agreement Acts, Ability One, and a letter of supply if you're not the manufacturer. First, the Trade Agreement Acts, or TAA. This is a list that changes um, not on any regular basis, but it changes as the administrations, various administrations have policy changes on identifying countries that we will or will not uh, trade with. So your products must be from a country that is TAA approved. If they are not directly from that country, but they are substantially transformed in a TAA-approved country, that is acceptable. 
Uh, some non-TAA uh, countries, and this is not a comprehensive list, include Argentina, China, India, Lebanon, and others. You can find the full uh, list of those countries on the FAR, which is the Federal Acquisition Regulation uh, 52.225-5. So the Trade Agreement Acts include various countries. These are going to be WTO, World Trade Organization, Free Trade, Least Developed, and Caribbean Basin countries. Again, you'll find those all on the FAR uh, website, which you can get to through acquisition.gov. The last update made to the Trade Agreement Acts was 2016, and two countries were added, which was Moldova and Ukraine. And here's just a, a snippet or a screenshot from the actual TAA website, which I mentioned you can find at acquisition.gov. So if you do have a, a product that's being manufactured, let's just say in Germany, and then suddenly Germany, um, this is simply hypothetical, not realistic, but let's say Germany for whatever reason is then bumped off of the TAA list. Uh, you would then not be able to supply that product through the GSA schedule. So you'll need somebody within your company to be monitoring this TAA list. Again, it's not static, it is changing, so just be sure to keep an eye on that. The second component here for the considerations is Ability One. Uh, again, not a static list, it's ever changing, and there are products and services that Ability One uh, individuals uh, provide. I've uh, listed the FAR section there, which is part eight and 8.7. And as kind of some background information, Ability One is part of Department of Justice, Unicor, Bureau, Bureau of Prison Products. So the individuals in the prisons are uh, productive by making various products. And this includes anything from uh, aircraft and equipment supplies, food processing, medical and dental supplies, various office uh, supplies and furnishings. And here is a uh, just a quick list from their uh, website, which is ability1.gov. And again, this is something that your company should monitor because, uh, for example, if you are providing, let's just say, um, license um, plate uh, uh, products to the government and then suddenly license plate products are uh, being produced by Ability One, your company would then need to remove those products uh, from their GSA schedule. The last part of the product company considerations is the letter of supply. This is if you are not a manufacturer. So if you're a dealer, distributor, or reseller, you must contact the manufacturer and have them complete this letter of supply. The letter of supply is found within the solicitation, or you can download it from the GSA website at gsa.gov. I highly suggest uh, showing this letter to the manufacturer before you decide to pursue the schedule. If there's some language in there that they are unhappy with, do not like, or cannot abide by, uh, this could be a problem. You, you absolutely need this letter if you are not the manufacturer in order to sell the manufacturer's products on the schedule. There are components of the letter that will reference TAA and Ability One. So uh, the manufacturer needs to confirm that their products are not being manufactured in any non-TAA countries. And here's just some language that I pulled from the, uh, from the letter of supply, which we'll cover over the next three slides. So the uh, the manufacturer needs to assure an uninterrupted supply, um, sufficient quantities, and for the duration of the contract period. Now, there may be an occasion where the manufacturer goes out of business or decides that to sever their relationship with your company. If you are the dealer, distributor, or reseller, you would then uh, obviously need to remove their products from your schedule. As we move further into the letter of supply uh, content and language, um, the, this is the piece that focuses on the TAA um, compliancy. So ensure that the manufacturer is supplying you products that are TAA compliant. It's also incumbent upon you to ensure that, um, that they are monitoring that. So you may want to have a, a monthly email to them uh, ensuring that the products are being manufactured in those compliant countries. 
And the third piece that I pulled out from the letter of supply um, focuses on two pieces, which is the comprehensive procurement guidelines, uh, as well as the environmental attributes. So again, ensure that this letter is something that a C-level executive from the manufacturer will be willing to sign off on. Some conclusions. GSA schedules are not for everyone. Again, they are one of many, many ways that the government purchases. Uh, you want to ensure that the Trade Agreement Act's Ability 1 and Letter of Supply are in place before uh, you're pursuing the schedule. If you find that all of the products that you want to sell are being manufactured in China, um, there may be some ways to sell those to the government, uh, but you can't do it through the GSA schedule. Uh, a special note here, if you are a manufacturer, uh, it's not always in your best interest to sell direct to the government. Manufacturers typically will work through various supply chains, including these dealers, distributors, and resellers, where they will give discounts of 20 to 30, sometimes more than that, uh, discount off of their products. You would then have to disclose that to GSA in the Commercial Sales Practices document, CSP, that we talked about earlier, and GSA will want greater discounts than what you are giving to your dealers and distributors and resellers. So in that scenario that you are the manufacturer, you probably want to consider selling uh, your products through these uh, various channels. So that way you don't have to uh, deal direct with GSA um, and give them these same lower discounts, which could potentially um, be a, a business risk for you. If you have further questions about the GSA schedule, uh, whether that is getting onto the schedule, audits, modifications, renewals, please feel free to contact us directly. Thanks for your time today, and please join us next week as we cover teaming and partnering for federal contracting success.